Hi there! Today we're going to learn how to break the ground in Element 3D and let rocks fly up. I haven't come up with a name for this effect yet, so if you have a nice name for this effect, please leave it down in the comments. Before we get started, please leave a like on this tutorial and subscribe to our channel. It helps out our channel a lot with the YouTube algorithm. I have left a link in the description to the 3D model I'll be using as particles in this tutorial. These are free to use, however, you do need to create an account in order to download them. If you like to use any different models, feel free to do so. I'm going to start by creating a new composition that is 1920 by 1080 pixels, 60 FPS and 10 seconds long. After that, I'm going to create a new solid layer, and I'll call it Element 3D. Next, apply the Element 3D effect to the layer. Click the Scene Setup button to open the Element 3D environment. Once you're in your Scene Setup, click the Create button and click the Plane Model. For the X and Y size, make it around 20 by 60 for now. You can apply a different material if you like. I'm going with something reflective so that I can see the particles in the reflection. Now let's actually make the plane reflective by going down to the reflect mode settings. You could add an environment, but I'll explain how to use that in a future tutorial. Create a new folder by clicking the Create Folder button, drag your newly created folder above the existing folder and rename it to something you can recognize it by. After renaming your folders to something recognizable, make sure your newly created folder is in the second group. In your model browser, go to the Starter Pack physical folder. Locate the Floor Fracture model and click it. Make sure it is in your second group folder. Scale up the model to your likings. I'll be scaling up the X and Y quite a lot. Apply the same material as your plane. You can simply copy the material over. I will be making this layer's reflect mode the same as the plane. I'm going to duplicate this two more times and place one in front and one in the back. You can duplicate it with Ctrl D. Once you're happy with the floor, we're going to create a new folder by clicking the Create Folder button again. Drag your new folder above the existing folders and rename it to something you can recognize it by. Make sure this folder is your third group. Import the 3D particle model. If you're not sure on how to import 3D models, click on the right top corner for a tutorial on how to import your models. Once you have your model imported, make it a skill you're happy with. I recommend keeping it rather small, as we're going to be copying it a lot. Apply the same material as before. When you're happy with your model, duplicate it a few times with Ctrl B. After you've done that, click the OK button at the top right corner to save your work. Now that you have a not so impressive looking composition, don't worry, we're going to fix that right now. Let's start by creating a camera by right clicking your timeline, new, camera. And make a new null layer by again right clicking on your timeline, new, null object. Make the null object 3D and separate its position by selecting the null layer and pressing P on your keyboard. This will bring the position settings forward. Right click your position settings and click separate dimensions. Now let's make the null layer the camera's parent layer. Bring forward the null's position and rotation settings. Now let's get a good overview of our scene. As you can see, the fractured floor is a bit higher than the plane floor. Let's fix that immediately so that we don't have to worry about that later. Select your element 3D layer and go down to your second group. Click the arrow to open it. Under the Particle Replicator settings, adjust the Y settings until the fractured floor is the same position as your plane. Once done, go to the middle of our composition where the particles are. Let's get started on the particles now. 
close your second group and open up your third group. Open the particle replicator settings and change the replicator shape to 3D grid. Once changed, go into the scale XYZ and put the X to 4, the Y to 2, and the Z to 4. Change the grid XYZ to 5, 3, 5. Open the multi object settings under the particle look settings. Check the checkbox and go to the scatter XYZ settings. Turn up the X and Z scatter a lot. Leave the Y value on 0, as we will be using this later. Play around with the rotation multi settings to make every particle look different. Go back up to the particle replicator settings and lower the Y value until the particles are under your floor fracture. Change the scatter Y value to see how it looks. If you want the particles to be smaller, you can always change the particle size. If you want more or less particles, you can change the grid X, Y, and Z. Change back the scatter value to zero and close up all the groups to create a better overview. Let's create a cool animation from scratch with the new environment we made. Open up the second group's multi-object settings under the particle look settings. Keyframe the rotation of random multi at the start of your composition. Go to a time in your timeline where you want to create your second keyframe. I'll be making it at the 2 second mark. Change the value of the rotation random multi to something you like. Once you're happy with the result, let's get started on the particles. Open up your third group and go into the multi object settings. Keyframe the scatter Y at the beginning of your timeline with a value of 0. Before changing the value, let's open up all the keyframed effects of your layer by clicking U on your keyboard. Go to a timestamp further than the fractured floor one and let the particles fly up by making the value higher. After that, open up the rotation settings, hold Alt on your keyboard and click the stopwatch next to rotation random multi effect. We have now created an expression. Change this expression to time times 150. This will make the rocks rotate randomly. You can make the value higher or lower depending on what look you're going for. After that, adjust the graphs to your likings. Next week, we're going to be working on the same project, so make sure you keep this one saved. A download for this project will also be available in the description. Next week, I'll show you how to hide the ugly background and improve a lot of the looks by adjusting the render settings. We will also be making the zoom transition you've seen at the start of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. If you did, please leave a like on this video and subscribe to our channel for more content. That's it for today, till next time.